midst of the pandemic. We all wondered, is this going to be a moment when things will stand still? You all did not stop. So in addition to the participation that, that Yana already went through, I'll share with you that we had interest from 34 countries and over 43 universities. I think about that kind of connectedness in the midst of a global pandemic, and I'm inspired. So I want to congratulate all of you finalists for making it to this stage. What you've done and what you've now contributed is truly remarkable. And yes, we'll be announcing two winners today, but I assure you, every one of you is a game changer. Every one of you is, is showing us the, how the power of technology can really deepen our human connections and, and make the world a better place for all of us. So with that, I'd like to turn things back to Yana and I look forward to hearing the exciting announcements. Thank you. Thank you so much, Barbara. And Good luck, <laughs> good luck with today's major announcement in your family. <laughs> yeah, we're staying tuned. All right, well, with that, we are going to bring another uh, incredibly uh, supportive individual, a uh, man without whose uh, belief and support along the way this couldn't have happened, Mr. Thomas Costerbill, the CEO and Executive Director of ASME, uh, to share a few remarks. Tom? Yana, thank you. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, Barbara, good luck with the baby. Let us know what happens. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, another, another successful engineer being born. So ASME is proud uh, to be working with Siemens in collaboration with Engineering for Change, uh, which is a, a knowledgeable organization, a digital platform, and more importantly, a community. Um, for me personally, uh, being part of the uh, hosting of this Siemens Design Challenge has been a lot of fun. It adds a, a component of engineering, which we all need to be doing. Innovate for Impact is, called, is a call to action to address, as Barbara said, two of the uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, two that are most important, zero hunger and clean water. Today, four billion people remain highly vulnerable to environmental crises threatened by basic human needs, such as food and water. In a few moments, we'll recognize those teams who have answered the, that call to utilize engineering and technology to offer solutions in addressing our planet's vital needs for adequate food and supplies of clean water. It's very simple. Very simple is the ideas that we'll see shortly. Now more than ever, uh, as we navigate through a global pandemic, sustainable engineering has a greater impact on our ability to meet the needs of future generations without compromising our natural environment. I'd like to thank and congratulate each of the contestants for this incredible work, and I wish you all the best of luck to each of our finalists. I'd also like to thank our E4C research fellows, the team of design challenge judges, the expert advisors, and the Siemens steering committee members for making this year's challenge an amazing experience for all the, all the, con <coughs> excuse me, all the contestants and leading us towards a better, a better world, truly a much better world. A very special thanks to Siemens, Barbara Humptons, personally, Engineering for Change, <clears throat> and providing everyone the <clears throat> a way for individuals to develop these solutions in a most cost-effective way. ASME's mission-driven work and commitment to advancing engineering, sustainable development is another step in making the world a better place for all humanity. All of you are part of that, and I thank you for that. Yana, back to you. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, where would we be without your leadership? Um, so now I'm very excited to invite one of our judges and uh, an incredible individual, Ms. Malika Bandagar, who leads the United Nations Development Program's Emerging Finance for Nature portfolio as part of the Global Program on Nature for Development. She previously served as the Global Fund Manager for the UNDP Innovation Facility, where she managed and monitored the facilitated portfolio across 165 experiments in 95 countries, raising $2 million in local resources, $2 in local resources for every dollar invested, apologies. Malika is an advisory board member of the GSMA's Big Data for Social Good Accelerator, UNFPA's Innovation Evaluation Reference Group, and the Measuring Impact Working Group of the International Development Innovation Alliance, 
a consortium of big players on innovation that included DFID, SIDA, USAID, UNICEF, Gates Foundation, and the Rockefeller Foundation. We're so honored for her time and her perspective. Malika? Great. Thank you, Iana. Thank you, actually, for the privilege to reimagine the world through your eyes. Thank you for building better everyday lives for the many. The top five risks identified by CEOs at the World Economic Forum in 2020 are all linked to environment. This underpins food systems, water security, and a world safe from zoonotic diseases. All of these have material impacts on a company's operational cost, risk, profitability, and reputation. Sustainability is a meta trend, and it's not just because the Sustainable Development Goals set them. In fact, it's been found that implementing the SDGs catalyzes new markets for next-gen prosperity in the trillions of dollars. Our attitudes to consumption and production are being rewired and rewritten. We're moving from eco-status to eco-standard. For example, Adidas tapped into the circular economy, turning plastic ocean waste into 11 million pairs of shoes. Ford and McDonald's are partnering up to create car parts for coffee waste. Uh, from coffee waste, and this year the European Investment Bank committed to mobilizing a trillion euros of financing to the circular economy by 2030. We innovate for the SDGs to transform lives. We need both dreamers and doers to change the world. 70% of the 169 SDG targets can be further enabled by applying new technologies already in development and being deployed. For example, Mercy Corps found sensors help to better report on the actual use of latrines and hand washing versus the in-person evaluation surveys, which had a huge self-reporting bias of over 40%. Using locally built drones for precision agriculture in Indonesia, um, local farmers were able to save 60% of their expenses by helping to spot treatment areas uh, with issues of soil fertility, crop disease, or water needs. And when IKEA Israel worked with product designers and the physically disabled to create a new product line, they were able to access and empower a new market, creating revenue and increase in revenue by 33%. For our world in which 15% of the population experiences disability, that's a billion people. And we are grateful every time that technology, business, finance, engineers, and civil society come together to solve wicked challenges. For companies that view emerging and frontier markets as their source of long-term growth, consumers in these markets could be worth $30 trillion by 2025. During COVID-19, disruptions that occurred across sectors in just one quarter were actually projected to occur gradually over a decade. So the new expectations in customization, instant feedback, autonomy, and deep sustainable practices are taking root in retail, finance, food, and more. And once created, these new expectations spread across demographics, markets, and sector. Consumers demand relevance. And it was wonderful to see that the Siemens Innovation Challenge places human-centered design at the core of the challenge requiring all entries to co-create with end users and embrace technology to create impact, all while tackling the issues of infrastructure, governance, upskilling, and commercial incentives for scaling. This pandemic has been the ultimate stress test of our local, national, global, and corporate system. We, the world, are sliding back at a time when we can little afford to do so. The COVID-19 crisis and resulting socioeconomic impacts are an unprecedented opportunity to regenerate economies and ensure growth happens within our planetary limit. I'm so happy to be with you here today to be part of the community that makes bold decisions to assertively direct technology to society's biggest challenges, deepening the pool of solutions. Making progress on the SDGs is possible when sustainable alternatives are widespread affordable, and just as good, if not better, than the legacy option. So once more, a big thank you to Siemens, ASME, Engineering for Change, and the finalists for building community resilience by making access to safe water and food simple and affordable. Thank you for helping to create a prosperous world 
by putting equity and equality at the heart of your design. Thank you. And back to you, uh, Yana. Thank you so much, Malika. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you, Tom, for these inspiring words. Um, it's, it's really exciting to, to be here today. And I, I have to say that uh, Malika is a representation of the incredible judges that, that joined us for uh, this challenge, who uh, contributed their time and their expertise in reviewing all of our submissions in uh, also sharing their feedback to enable our competitors to uh, integrate those expert perspectives into improving their designs. So uh, for those judges who are here today, um, I would like to give them the opportunity to say uh, a quick 30 second hello. We've already heard from Malika. I'm going to pick at random from my screen. So uh, let's go ahead and have Mark Burhop uh, say a quick hello. Sure, hello, and I'm excited to see who the winner is now. Uh, I, I, one thing I want to point out is I was really impressed with the people here. Uh, at a time when there's so much difficulty in the world, uh, it's really awesome to see the, the enthusiasm from the, the, the people working on this project. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. And now, Jason Saito. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for such a large group attending. Looking forward to seeing the results and hearing the reactions. Uh, I was really inspired to work with this group of design challenge applicants um, and, and startups is really how I view them. I do venture capital work for Siemens um, and was very proud to be part of uh, this process as a representative for Siemens and see some of our tools, as Barbara mentioned, brought to bear on such global challenges. You know, Siemens has a very long history. Um, you know, around the world trying to provide uh, engineering solutions to, to make people's lives better. And that, of course, is the core of what this project and competition is all been about. And um, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you, Jason. And now, Danielle Nirenberg. Hi, I'm sorry I can't join by video, but I just want to say what an honor it was to be part of phase one and phase three and look at these exciting innovators and, and see all the change that they're making in the world. And, and the group of judges, they were just fascinating. So again, what an honor to be involved in this. And I want to thank Siemens and everyone who was involved. Thank you so much, Danielle. And Christian Holm, I don't know if you are uh, with us. I know the audio was a little tough. I am. Let's see if you can hear me. We can. Apparently you can. Okay, we're good. Now you can also see me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the chance for being a judge in that great, great challenge. I really loved it. It was really exciting. And it raised my confidence that together we can really tackle the big challenges of the world. Thank you, Christian. And we have Ali Nadimi. I'd like to quickly congratulate everyone involved in this challenge. I was honored to be involved in uh, many phases of this challenge and I was quite impressed with all the designs coming together, especially in the CAD aspect of all the designs. And uh, I'd like to congratulate everyone and tell everyone that everyone's here making a big difference in the world today. Thank you so much. I think that's all the judges we have on. I know we had some conflicts. We have Daniel, Dan Benna, but he's going to speak shortly, so I'll leave it to him in a little bit. Uh, Marilyn can let me know if I've forgotten anybody, but and, or you can feel free to raise your virtual hand. I'm trying to scan through quickly on here on Zoom, but it is a bit challenging. Um, I do want to, we are, we're moving on time, so I'm going to have to move us ahead. I also want to extend uh, my thanks uh, uh, sincerely to all of the Engineering for Change research fellows from India, Kenya, Uganda, Spain, Colombia, United States, who worked with us. Uh, to also make this challenge a reality. Um, if you can just uh, quickly say hello, I'm going to call you again as I see you on the screen. Krista? Hi, I'm Krista Liguori. Um, I was an Easy for C fellow in 2015 and expert fellow in 2017. Um, and I'm currently a PhD student at Virginia Tech in environmental engineering. Um, and it was a lot of fun seeing how the teams progressed over the course of this challenge. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Krista. Kathleen? I was an E4C fellow in 2019, and I'm currently a PhD student at CU Boulder. Um, huge thanks to the team for putting this together, and congratulations to the winners. Thank you, Kathy. Ignatius? 
Uh, hi guys, <clears throat> my name is Ignatius. Um, I was an E4C fellow in 2018 in the energy truck. Um, I currently work as a research assistant at Strathmore University in Nairobi, Kenya. I really enjoyed the, the challenge and actually seeing all these different projects transitioning to, to the end. Thank you. Thank you. Benson? Oh, Benson, can you unmute? Oh, perhaps not. All right, not to worry. Um, quickly scanning through, I'm hoping I didn't forget anyone. Um, I believe I didn't. If I did, I do apologize. Please forgive me. Doing this on the screen is, is a bit of a challenge, but needless to say, we had an incredible, incredible assortment of fellows. Um, all right. So with this, I am excited to introduce you all to our finalists. We are going to go through and provide our finalists uh, an opportunity to share with us their elevator pitch. One minute of introductions. We're going to start with the Zero Hunger Track and with Mobilaji Omoboware. All right, so I'm Mobilaji Mobali from Nigeria, representing the post harvest loss reduction team. Uh, our work was on the multi-crop greenhouse dryer, and it's a solution that is related to drying. Now, in, the, in sub saharan Africa, we understand that there are lots of losses. There are still a lot of losses all over the world. But in sub, in sub saharan Africa, it accounts for about a quarter of the total number of people who are hungry all over the world. And drying, we have recognized drying as a method by which food can be preserved. And based on this, our solution looked at providing the much needed facility for drying, especially in off-grid communities. Now, the our solution, which is the hybrid multi-crop greenhouse dryer, utilizes the energy from the sun and as, as well as the byproducts of agricultural production, such like biomass from maybe corn stover and, all, and other things for drying, because it allows drying to continue even on cloudy days or during the night. A typical solar dryer would only work during the day, but with our technology, the foods can be dried both during the day and at night or on cloudy days. And the specific target are people in off-grid communities. Uh, during our survey, when we went out to meet with uh, the needy, the people who need this technology, we discovered that a lot of them walk several kilometers to get to the nearest hard road to spread their products. Some climb on mountains. And this affects a lot of women and children. But with our technology, which is the hybrid multi-crop greenhouse dryer, the Greenhouse dryer can be located, built, constructed within their communities. They don't have to trek distances before they are able to use it. And the hygienic nature, it's able, the, the technology provides an, a means of making sure that the crops are dried in an hygienic way. Currently, the sun dry method used by most agrarian communities in Africa and, and in many places in the developing world leads to a lot of contamination, but our technology solves this problem. And to cap it all, the technology is sensor controlled such that as soon as drying takes place and water is evaporated from the crops, the sensors are activated to extract the moisture so that the drying can continue. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. And next we have Ecolife Podru. Is Kyle here? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm here. Uh, my name is Kyle Geyser, and I am representing the Ecolife Foods Social Enterprise in Uganda. Uh, in Uganda, farmers can lose uh, up to, uh, I'm sorry, actually, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if I can. Um, perfect. So this is our team right here uh, that you can see. And uh, so in Uganda, farmers can lose up to 40% of their harvest due to poor handling and storage. Uh, this leaves farmers with less profit and bargaining power and consumers with less nutritious food. So at Ecolife, we are co-creating an energy efficient solar powered cold room for off-grid farming cooperatives. I'm, Our innovation- I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bother you. Um, yes. Can you please share your screen? We're not seeing the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah. There we go. You might have windows in front of your. Yeah. Oh, I'm, no. sorry to, yeah this <laughs> we, I'm sorry. This way we have a great visual. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for letting me know. Um, no hopefully that is uh, yeah, working just, okay. Yeah, and just remove that box on the right hand side. It's probably, probably have a picture of all of us. Okay. Yep, there you go. Is that okay? Working all right? Oh. Yes, that looks great. Thank you okay. so much. Okay, sorry Thanks for, for letting for me know what you're you. seeing on your end. Okay, thank <laughs> so, you. Um, at, uh, I just want to uh, be able to present the uh, there. So at EcoLife, uh, we are co-creating an energy-efficient solar-powered coal room uh, for off-grid farming cooperatives. Our innovation lies in our uh, wall and ceiling panels, which provide structural insulation and built-in thermal energy storage. This thermal storage is achieved with upcycled plastic and biodegradable materials which freezes during the day and keeps the cold room cold at night. Unlike other options, our room is developed and fabricated in Uganda uh, from locally available materials. So it's affordable and it's easy to maintain. Our impact to farmers and traders is substantially increased income. To communities, it means more nutritious food and new employment opportunities. Environmentally, uh, less energy waste means reduced greenhouse gases and batteries are replaced with earth-friendly earth materials at night. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. And next up, we have Only Fresh, Chuma Azuzu. Hello. I'm trying to share my screen. Oh, I'll stop sharing mine. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, good morning. My name is Chuma, uh, and I like tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> more than half of the tomatoes grown in Nigeria goes to waste uh, due to lack of cold chain storage and bad packaging, resulting in food insecurity and significant financial losses for farmers and distributors. Uh, our solution, Only Fresh, is a standalone refrigerator unit that can be assembled onto trucks uh, or pulled by a vehicle. We've designed it to be powered by batteries, which are charged using a combination of solar cells, the truck itself, or mains power when parked. The unit is modular and is designed to be loaded using recyclable plastic crates. Our technology is unique because only fresh can transport food stored at different temperatures at the same time and will be manufactured locally, which results in ease of repair and prompt service. Our overall goal is to reduce food waste, enable agribusinesses improve revenue, and employ local talent. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, and next up, we have Solar Thermal Adsorptive Refrigerator, or STAR, Brianna Dooley. Hello, um, I will just share my screen. Okay. Hello and thank you for joining. My team's design is for a solar thermal adsorptive refrigeration system, also known as STAR. In the small remote town of Wira, located in the high jungle of Cusco, Peru, most of the population works in the agricultural sector and have fallen victim to high poverty rates and minimal access to electricity, leaving the most vulnerable without quality food products. Every year, over 127 million tons of food are wasted in Latin America alone, almost half of which is lost during transportation and storage. This amount of food is enough to feed 300 million people. STAR will provide a reliable and sustainable refrigeration technology for farmers in this region by using solar energy, activated carbon, and ethanol to create a refrigerated environment. Accompanied by an advanced business model, STAR will revolutionize food storage in developing communities by improving food security and increasing nutritional quality, contributing to the progress of SDG2, Zero Hunger. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, I'm going to, okay, there we go. So now we are going to move to our, our clean water track uh, finalists, and we're going to start with the team whose name I've continued to struggle with throughout the entire challenge, so I apologize in advance. Apuya Buin, the guardian of water, and Monica Andrea Guiteres. Yes, hello. You say Perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we are excited to be here and we are really happy. Um, we are at this stage of 
our of the contest in general. I hope you enjoy our presentation. So the Apuya Win Initiative comes from the goal of developing an accessible solution to provide safe water for the Parenska community and potentially more than 140 communities in the northern coast of Colombia. We propose a technical solution for an easy to use solar desalinator that can produce up to eight liters of drinkable water per day. All parts are of the shelf components and they fit in a single shipping box. The device can be assembled and maintained by any person without any special rules. We also propose an educational approach working along with the community so they can fully understand the constructive features of the device and the physical principles behind it. This is the second version of the device as we tested it and improved it along with the community. The technology does not belong to any commercial business. It belongs to the community. Our desalinator does not require fossil fuels or electricity, taking care of the environment. Additionally, the community could save 90% of the money they are spending on buying water, ensuring an important social impact. We are looking for funding to build, produce, and distribute our sustainable solar desalinator in these and more communities with similar conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, apologies if I didn't switch to your screen in time, but it was a beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have a desalination battery for electrochemical brackish water treatment. Lucas Hackle. That's right. Hi, everyone. My name is Lucas. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of h 2 Only Technology, and I'm speaking to you from uh, San Francisco, California, which is where my entire team and I are located. And if you've been following the news, California is currently battling some of the largest forest fires in its history, fires that are a direct consequence of climate change induced droughts that we've been living through in the last decade. And as such, these fires serve as a both perfect and terrifying reminder of how the question of water security will undoubtedly become one of the most um, central engineering challenges of the upcoming century, both for um, developing, but also fully industrialized, fully developed nations like the United States. Agriculture accounts for about 70% of global freshwater supplies, and at the same time, salty or so-called brackish groundwater, which is far more abundant than fresh groundwater, especially in arid regions of the world, and this is true for California, but also northern India, for example, is not used at all. And it was this exact fact that motivated my co-founder and I to build a technology that could effectively turn brackish groundwater into water that's useful for irrigation. Given our backgrounds in energy storage, environmental science, and uh, battery science, we have termed our system the desalination battery. And we built it for the exact needs of our customers, California cashew and almond farmers. There are, of course, other technologies, um, all of which rely on reverse osmosis in some way, shape, or form that could be used to uh, desalinate brackish groundwater, but our system is better in three uh, specific dimensions. Firstly, our modular stackable design allows for, uh, for us to produce water at virtually any scale. Um, secondly, our system can be targeted to um, and be made selective for the ions that are most toxic to crop development. And we do that by carefully tailoring the surface chemistry of our active ingredients or materials. And lastly, we can squeeze far more water out of a liter of brackish groundwater up to 90% than um, an RO system can. So thereby we minimize brine management costs and the overall costs of this, of this treatment process. As I said, we plan to deploy and test our technology here in California first, but we hope that after reaching maturity, our innovation will spread to other dry regions of the world and help communities uh, globally to not just sustain, but thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. All right. And next up, we have desalination for Santa Elena communities Real, Francisco Plaza. Uh, thank you, Yana. Yeah, I'm really honored to be here representing the team. Uh, just going to go right away and, and present our pitch. So, due to the lack of reliable water sources, only in the community of El Real, more than 9,000 acres of land are unproductive. Beyond this specific case, this is indeed a worldwide concern. As a very culturally diverse country, it is important to adapt to the particular challenges and necessities that different populations face in Ecuador. As a case in point, we design WHEEL through constant interaction and dialogue with the coastal commune of El Real. WHEEL's technology allows for reliable and sustainable seawater desalination for agricultural production. Our design reduces our implementation and operation costs to only 81 cents per cubic meter of water produced. 
Wheel is the product from holistic collaboration of different fields of knowledge with proposes a soil and ecosystem regeneration program. Concurrently, it strives to contribute to the integral development of the community through educational and cooperative initiatives. Thank you and vouch for El Real. <laughs> Thank you so much. And last but not least, Water, Water Everywhere, Daniel Hodges. Hello, am I coming through? Yes. Excellent. I'm going to share my screen. Did you know globally water scarcity is common? What does that mean? It means that commonly underserved populations lack access to safe drinking water. And in third world communities, women and children defer their dreams, spending their time gathering groundwater, which is often polluted. Or if there's a delivery service, people may fight for it. Today's water distillation is dated, expensive, and can't, can't keep pace. Finding solutions is key. Safe drinking water changes everything. Hi, my name is Daniel Hodges of the Water Water Everywhere team, and we've got the answer. A cost-effective standalone device, easy to install and maintain, called the Advanced Diffusion Station. The secret, green energy, no electricity, Wave, wind, and sun drive water and vacuum pumps to gather and distill seawater. Added vital nutrients for health, uh, designed for ease of manufacturing and assembly, mostly off-the-shelf components in a sustainable circular economy, selling the waste brine. Addressing multiple United Nations sustainable development goals, advanced diffusion makes water scarcity scarce. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, you don't mind stopping to share your screen now? All right. Thank you. Uh, this is truly remarkable. Thank you so much for all of our finalists. In the next few years, the technology you, technologies you are seeing here on our virtual stage will be making their way into communities all over the globe. They'll be providing tangible improvements to quality of life, making agriculture more productive, and simplifying the process of securing clean water and transforming our world in countless ways. It's been such a pleasure working with all of these finalists and we wish we could move you all forward, but for each track, there can only be one. So with that, uh, we're going to now start on our announcement, starting with our Zero Hunger track. And I would like to welcome to our virtual stage, uh, Camille Johnston, who is Siemens' Senior Vice President of Corporate Affairs, where she leads the company's integrated communications and brand strategies across the United States. She serves as a member of the board of the Siemens Foundation, which sustains the STEM workforce and tomorrow scientists and engineers. Prior to her time at Siemens, her impressive track record includes communications roles supporting First Lady Michelle Obama, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Entertainment Industry Foundation, amongst others. Thank you, Camille, for setting aside some time for us today and for championing this challenge right from the start. Over to you. Thank you very much, everybody. It was like such an impressive um, round of finalists. Um, I know that as a member of the steering committee and after many months of planning, we're all excited to be here today. Um, as you just heard, all of the teams and their respective solutions are incredibly impressive, um, which is part of the reason the Innovate for Impact Design Challenge has been such a passion project for Siemens um, and all, the, all of those who've been involved with it from, from its inception. We've all enjoyed watching this initiative grow from kind of a germ of an idea to a worldwide event um, and to the conclusion of it here today. Um, I'm honored to present our Zero Hunger winner, to pick just one was a painstaking decision for the judges. All of these designs really shined um, in terms of their real life applications and ease of adoptability, which of course is the crucial element in bringing solutions to communities in need. Um, the winning team successfully met the challenge of designing a post-harvest off-grid preservation solution. They set out to mitigate the loss farmers face as a result of poor post-harvesting handling and storage techniques. This team's unique approach to cold storage, which utilized wall panels made of locally available materials, creates an affordable, easy to maintain, and off-grid compatible solution. I am so proud to present the Zero Hunger Design Award to Ecolife Foods, which created the Ecolife Cold Room. 
Congratulations to Kyle Geyser, Ian Williams, and Hadesian and Tombi, representing the U.S. and Uganda. Thank you, Camille, and let's all give them a round of virtual applause. <laughs> Uh, I would like to invite Kyle to our virtual stage to say a few words. All right, let me uh, walk on up. Just give me a second here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, this is truly an honor. Uh, and, and speaking on behalf of uh, Ian and uh, Hadija, uh, in fact, Hadija, even uh, being the co-founder of, uh, of Ecolife Foods, is also representing a whole swath of of other team members are on the ground in Uganda and farmers. Uh, and so um, just speaking on behalf of all of us, uh, that we are extremely excited uh, and honored. Um, in fact, I don't have anything really prepared, so I'm speaking a little bit off the cuff here. Um, but I think uh, I can speak for all of us to say that um, uh, we are extremely excited because um, what we really are passionate about is the fact that um, this technology is co-researched and co-developed uh, and then built in country. And uh, that's, that's the reason why we joined this challenge. That's the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Um, uh, as was mentioned, I think earlier before uh, by Barbara that uh, nowadays research uh, can take place uh, anywhere really. And, uh, and, and that's one of the things that we are, are making a, a very large effort to do. Uh, we have uh, farmers who are there on the ground who are uh, helping us test different materials, um, who are doing uh, this research, and then we're also partnering with universities too. Um, so we kind of span that, that entire gamut. Uh, so um, uh, that's, that's what I have to say. Uh, we have a, a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, we're really excited um, uh, that this will propel a lot of those research needs uh, to take our prototype. Um, uh, uh, into, uh, into the next stage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kyle, and congratulations. All right, now um, to announce our clean water track winner, I'd like to invite one of our judges, Mr. Dan Benna, who most recently led the sustainable development and food safety agenda for PepsiCo Global Operations, the world's second largest food and beverage company. He now serves and has served in various board and other capacities for the Safe Water Network, where he is now a senior consultant, World Business Council for Sustainable Development, the steering board of the World Bank 2030 Water Resources Group, the United Nations CEO Mandate, the World Economic Forum of Global Agenda Council on Water Security, the U.S. Water Alliance, and the list goes on and on. Dan, I welcome you to our stage. Thank you, Jan. I, I should have told you that I, I kind of detest introductions. And if you had said that I love my wife, my family, and my pets, I think that would have been fine. Uh, I want to I thank you for this remarkable opportunity. Um, in particular, I wanted to thank Engineering for Change and ASME. Somehow, you guys have managed to marry, you have the secret sauce, to marry indigenous wisdom, developed world engineering expertise, together to solve intractable challenges in the developing and emerging world. And that is remarkable. In addition, let me just thank Barbara and Siemens. You know, when I was at PepsiCo, we bought a lot of Siemens technology for water treatment. And I was asked to speak to Siemens senior leadership team years ago in Berlin. And the one thing I learned about Siemens that I did not know is corporate social responsibility, social conscience, has been embedded in that company literally since it was founded over a century ago. And why do I bring that up? Because it's important to have the authenticity of the hosts and the sponsors for any challenge like this. And you don't get more authentic than E4C, ASME, and Siemens. I did want to talk a little bit, you know, the, the previous speakers did my work for me in talking about the SDGs, which is remarkable. I want to talk just a bit about the urgency of why the clean water track is so critically important. And even before the SDGs were ratified by 193 countries, there was something called UN Human Right to Water. And in fact, this year is the 10th anniversary of Human Right to Water. And that right defines safe, sufficient, accessible, acceptable, and affordable water for all. That's a mouthful, both to say and to reach, but it's because of challenges like this and innovation like this that I see there's a light at the end of the proverbial tunnel. Let me just calibrate everyone. 
Today, as we sit here enjoying this remarkable event, over 200 million people, mostly women and girls, spend 30 minutes round trip to collect water from an improved water source. That's not even safe. That's just an improved water source. Over 2 billion people today lack access to safely managed water supplies. Equally, over 2 billion people drink water contaminated with feces. It's remarkable, right? When you think about the unbelievable innovation that we have, the technology that is allowing us to connect all over the world, and then you hear things like that, that's a disconnect, right? And it's not only the developing and emerging world, it happens in the USA. I mean, several years ago, the, the last infrastructure report card that the US drinking water infrastructure got from the ASCE was a grade of D. And that wasn't the first time we got a grade of D. The million miles of pipe in the US for drinking water is in sorry need of upkeep at the cost of about a trillion dollars over the next 25 years. So this problem, this urgency is not just a developing and emerging world problem. It is a global problem. And let me tell you one last statistic. When we shift to solutions, and there have been a tremendous amount of organizations that have focused on solutions, 50% of projects fail in the first five years because they lack looking at the, de the deployment ecosystem. They focus exclusively on the technology and not everything that is needed to advance the technology. Well, this, this challenge is different. You made sure that through the phases, all of those things within the deployment ecosystem were focused on supply chain, regulations, uh, community engagement, everything that is so critical to sustained success is part of this challenge. And I applaud all of the finalists. I applaud the hosts, the sponsors for that. It has been remarkable. Now, if I had a drum roll, I would love to be able to use a drum and do that because I want to announce the winner. Before I announce the winner, though, I want to share just a little bit of a distillation of what the judges' comments were across all of the phases. There was one thing that was remarkable that the winning team did. Every finalist did technology really well. Every finalist that, to some level talked about regulations, which is really important. This team in particular focused on community engagement. And not only as a single snapshot, they didn't only go into the community and do a survey. They literally made the community part of the process from the beginning all the way through to the community actually co-creating and co-owning improvements to that process. And why that's important is all too often, we tend to impose what we think communities need on those communities, and we don't think of asking the communities what they want. This team did that. So it is my absolute pleasure on behalf of all of the judges of the Clean Water Track to announce the winner, which is Team Apuyawin, the Guardian of Water, represented by John Aguilar, Manuel Mejia, Monica Gutierrez, Alex Trujillo, and Sebastian Rodriguez. With that, let me turn it to them for their acceptance speech and let's give them a round of applause. Hi. <laughs> You cannot believe, I don't know if you can see us. There is a whole production here behind <laughs> and everything. Um, we are pretty happy. Um, I mean, we are really excited with this project for us. The engagement with the community and the active participation with them has been um, such a learning experience for us. And we are really eager to um, keep on developing it and this um it the fact that we just won um push us further um in in the development of the project um i want to thank all the members of the team alex manuel sebastian john and um no i don't know what to say i am shaking here <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> so really thank you Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are so proud of all of our finalists. We, we want to thank all of you. Um, it's, it's been an honor working with you so far. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, there we go. I can see you all. We're, we're going to do a, a quick a photo, virtual photo all together. We will try. 
Uh, so I encourage you to uh, go ahead and give yourselves a round of applause, everyone. <laughs> we are so honored. You have made incredible strides. We want to congratulate all of you. We want to thank you all for taking the time to work with us, to, to continue to in invest in your innovations. Um, we are going to continue to tell your stories. We encourage you to uh, take a, a stay tuned, uh, not stay tuned, but stay connected to us on our, on our platform. Um, please know that your stories will continue to be shared. Um, we want to thank everyone again, the judges, the experts, the fellows, our, our, uh, also Catapult Design, who supported us in this challenge. Uh, none of this would have been possible without your support. With that, I want to wish you all a uh, good morning, good evening, and, and let you enjoy uh, the rest of your day. I do want to ask uh, Apuja <laughs> and also would like to ask Ecolife to stay with us uh, for a couple of minutes after the ceremony. We will make this recording available to everyone um, afterwards on our site, and there's going to be more videos to come. But uh, for now, uh, congratulations, you are all winners in our eyes. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your intelligence. And please continue to do the good work that you have showed us here today. Uh, the world really needs your spirit, your intelligence, and your capacity. Thank you. All right. Yana, thank you. <clears throat> Great job. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you for staying on with us. I, I'm, I'm so thrilled you could stay as long as you could. It's, brilliant it's brilliant presentation uh, and just a dynamic group of individuals. So oh. congratulations to you and the team. Uh, congratulations to Siemens for their continued support. It's a, a great, great morning. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great way to start the day. Yeah. Yeah, on behalf of, yeah, on behalf of Siemens, I want to say thank you, too. It was an incredibly impressive event. Um, and despite all of the limitations on engagement, considering COVID, I think that this was really, really um, special um, and important for everyone. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Camille. We really are grateful for your support from day one. Again, my congratulations to all of you. Brilliant designs. It, the hard part is it always has to come down to one or two. So uh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy the thank rest you. of the day. Thank you. You too, Tom. You too, Camille. Thank you so much. Thank you to the judges. Um, Kyle and Monica, I believe you received, uh, should have received the invitation from uh, Mariela, uh, Mariela, Marilyn. <laughs> no, not, not yet, but I will send it right now. Okay. And Ashley, I think, is on the line. Um, I don't know if she, she's still there. All right, so um, Marilyn, if you could please provide Monica and Kyle with uh, a private chat also, just to make sure that they join us in the appropriate uh, Zoom room. Thank you, Ayana. I just want to say thank you for everything. Like, the A4C challenge was a huge thing for us. We're this young community of people that really did not have the much experience as the other contestants in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the contest. We're just super honored to be here and just want to like, you gave us a framework to keep developing and we're, we're going to keep up with a, with a good job. I just want to say thanks for everything. I am a huge uh, uh, fan of the E4C work and looking forward for competing and keep going with E4C, E4C efforts, you know? Thanks for thank that. Thank you, Francisco. No, thank you. That means the world to us. Uh, our, our goal here is not just to, uh, you know, go through this challenge, but to equip you with the tools and the resources to succeed. So thank you for those words. It, it really means a lot to us and to know that the work we're doing is, is helping you. So thank you so much and best of luck. Please stay connected. There'll be more opportunities in the future. I guarantee it. Um, and please, uh, we will be hearing about those uh, as an E4C member through communication. So please do stay in touch. I'm being very, very authentic about that. There's more to come. This is just looking, the beginning. I'm looking forward for that. Thank you again. Thank you. But, uh, <laughs> Congrats ciao, to the ciao, Francisco. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for that wonderful pitch. It was really ex exceptional. Lucas as well. Thank you so much. Again, I wish you could all be winners. It's, it's a being, a, being in the judges' deliberations as a facilitator. It's, it's a nail biter, and, and you want to advocate for everybody. Um, but it's obviously there, there can only be one. 
But again, keep it up. You guys are doing such incredible work and we were so deeply impressed. All right, and Malika, thank you for, for those incredible remarks. Um, you are a rock star, great, thank you so much. All right, I'm going to uh, go ahead. Uh, Marilyn, are we all set in terms of everybody knowing where they need to go? Uh, yes, Yana, so um, Abuya, uh, they'll have, um, they have already the link to connect now at 11, and then okay. I've given uh, Kyle uh, the link to connect at 11.30 possible so okay. that we can further uh, talk to them. Okay. Okay. So we will join you on that line. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave the meeting. <laughs>